Hello everyone and welcome back to Newegg TV. I'm Steve and today I'm going to do an overview on this AMD based graphics card from MSI. This is the R9 270X Hawk Edition. All right, so this is the Hawk Edition and as the rest of Hawk series from MSI are, they are OC certified or in other words, just really made for overclocking. So let me just flip this down, open up the first flap here and show you guys a couple things on the inside. Uh, the essentials for overclockers, it does come with twin BIOS, but the other BIOS is primarily used for LN2. So if you were going to do some exotic cooling for this, uh, for this video card, of course, you'd have to take off the twin frozer uh, cooler on it. But yes, you could actually go to LN2. And basically by switching it over from the default BIOS to LN2, you're disabling OCP and disabling APS. That's over current protection and active phase switching. On top of that, it does have an enhanced power design. And according to this graph, you're getting 60% more with the equipped eight phases of PWM PDM design for GPU and two phases for the memory, uh, essentially trying to give you more power output to give you a maximum overclock uh, potential. So underneath that, we do have a couple other things we'll show you in just a moment. The uh, voltage checkpoints here using a multimeter, you can actually read the, the voltage values of the GPU and memory and the VDDCI. Uh, from those different checkpoints directly. Also, triple over voltage, which is MSI's uh, 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 support from their MSI Afterburner software to adjust the GPU, the memory, and the VDDCI uh, also to help unlock more of the overclocking potential. And if we go up here to the military class four components, uh, we're looking at new superferrite chokes as well as highly conductive capacitors and dark solid capacitors. And each one of those things providing either a more efficient means of getting the power to the, the system or uh, with, less, uh, with less leakage or with more lifetime uh, expectancy. So bottom line is military class four giving you the best bang for the buck. And a couple more things I'll, I'll show you here at the bottom part of the flap. Uh, that's the Twin Frozer 4 design. And uh, they are two 100 millimeter fans. And those fans are blowing over an eight millimeter heat pipe, which I'll show you as soon as I get out of the box. Also, they have dust removal uh, built into the system that allows it to spin backwards for the first 30 seconds upon system startup to kind of suck all this dust out of it and clean it out for you. All right, here's all the goods that come inside the box. I'm going to start with the driver CD as well as the software here uh, that they provide for you, the MSI Afterburner software for overclocking. Although you're going to want to go to MSI's website and download the newest version, but in case you're in an area where you actually don't have internet connection, it's probably helpful to have that just in case. Uh, here's actually a quick start guide. Kind of shows you a couple things inside here. The overview showing you kind of the... Uh, the video card and, and everything that's on it and where it's at. Uh, here's the getting started side where you're actually going to know what you're going to need to install this card, all the little tools and everything else, which is probably just going to be a screwdriver anyways. And uh, a little bit more information about the software here. i flip that down. And then we also have a quick user's guide. Uh, the only thing that's really interesting about this, other than the, the fact that you could be reading it into several different languages, is it actually has the hierarchy here of all the different graphics series from MSI. So you've got the gaming series, you've got the Hawk series that we're looking at right now, and the flagship, which is the Lightning series. I'll set that off to the side. Then we also have an analog DVI connector to the VGA connector adapter here. In, the, in case you do need that, you have it. And then we have, let's see, three of the voltage read connectors. You'll need these if you were actually going to set up a, a voltmeter or a multimeter to read uh, the, the voltages off of the different connecting points. Then for power, they're providing you with two adapters to go from 4-pin Molex to 4-pin Molex to be specific to 6-pin uh, peg connectors here. And that's because uh, if you don't have a power supply that actually has these connectors, it's kind of helpful to have these. And finally, on to the graphics card itself. I had to take a moment here to take the plastic off so you guys could see this Twin Frozer 4 and all of its black and yellow glory. Uh, this is aluminum, so the black here is aluminum. Uh, and then we have the two fans here, 200 millimeter fans. Before I get too much into that, I actually want to show you the full look of the card. I'll flip it around to the back. Uh, you have a flat black PCB followed by this uh, black aluminum backplate that they provide. Gives a little bit more rigidity to the card and hopefully combat uh, the possible droopage of this card over time with the heat that it's gonna, it's gonna feel. But uh, underneath these fans, we do have an aluminum thin array and uh, eight millimeter heat pipes. I also almost forgot to say that these are propeller style blades giving a little bit more airflow through the fins and 
hopefully cool this card down a little bit. Uh, GPU info that it's actually cooling it down. It's a 28 nanometer Pitcairn graphics chip. It's the same architecture as the HD 7870 and 7850. Uh, 1280 shader processors, 32 raster operators, core clock of 1100 megahertz, and a boost clock MSI says of 1150 megahertz. Uh, compare that to the stock 270X core clock of 1050 megahertz. Memory inside, you're looking at 2048 megabytes or 2 gigabytes of GDR5 at 1400 mega transfers per second. That is quad pump to give you a total of 5600 mega transfers per second effective memory clock. A uh, 256-bit memory interface uh, gives you a memory transfer rate of 5.6 gigatransfers per second. I also wanted to mention at the top here, this is where the uh, BIOS switch is located. That's going to switch you back and forth between the LN2 and the default BIOS. Uh, looking to the left of that, we have the two six-pin PEG connectors giving this card power. And if I slide it all the way over to the other side, I can show you this is the uh, Crossfire two-way finger connector. So that way, if you wanted to go into two-way Crossfire, you could do so. I'll flip this around here to the very bottom. And this is the PCI Express Gen 3 port that is going, or excuse me, slot, ah, connector. And that will allow you to use it in a PCI 3 uh, Gen 3 slot or PCI 2 or 1 for that matter because it is backwards compatible. I'm going to spin it around to the back here to show you a couple more things. Uh, we do have uh, the PWM fan connector here that's powering both fans as well as the three different connectors uh, to connect in and actually check, check the voltage with your multimeter. And right here we have an aluminum plate that's going to cool down the MOSFETs as well as the memory and hopefully give you a better overclock by keeping this all these components cool. I'm going to flip it around to the I.O. now and finish this up. We have DisplayPort 1.2, HDMI version 1.4a. We have the uh, analog DVI connector as well as the digital DVI connector. Oh, and uh, one more thing, actually, I almost forgot. We do need to measure this card so you have an idea if it would fit in your case or not. It looks like about 10 and a half inches of clearance. But I think that just about wraps it up with this overview of the R9-270X Hawk Edition from MSI. If you like what you saw today, don't forget to click the like button. If you haven't already done so, click subscribe to any of our various YouTube channels, and we'll see you guys soon.